All right. So before we get started tonight, I wanted to go over this. You know, I'm sure you guys have seen this already, but for those of you that haven't, um, I wanted to uh, show you that the pre-order for the gold add-on, which makes basically your already existing version of Farm Simulator the gold version, is now available. You can't download it yet, but it's available for pre-order. It is $19.99, which I feel like is a great deal for what you're getting. Uh, and uh, you'll get it mailed to you, obviously, through email once it's released. If you have Steam, you can buy it through Steam. I'm going to actually try to buy it through this website because I have three copies of the game, and I don't really want to buy three copies of the gold add-on. I feel like, I don't know, I, licensing, I'm going to look into it a little bit. I want to make sure what I'm doing is legal, but I've also spent over 170 bucks on this game so far between the copies and the all the DLCs that I've had to buy for all three copies. <laughs> And spending another $60 is kind of seeming a little over the top for somebody that's been pretty faithful. But then again, if that's legal, then that's how I'm going to have to do it. So, um, But I am going to look into that for sure. So here, first of all, you get the map. It is Sosnovka, which is you know obviously sounding very Czechoslovakian, Polish, Russian, Eastern. Uh, and it has a very Eastern rundown look to it, which I love. I love it. It looks great. They don't show you a lot. But what I've seen so far online and in videos, it looks really nice. Um, here's the new tractors. You get a bunch of Zetor tractors. Zetor is a Czech Republic company. What we used to know as Czechoslovakia. But that's now known as the... I don't even know where I was. I just got interrupted. So <laughs> Anyway, it's a Czech company. And has been in business since, I think, like the 40s. They, they're actually Zetor, de Zetor dealers. Zetor, Zetor, whatever. Uh, dealers in America, like a bunch of them. Every state seems to have one, at least one. Uh, it looks like there's 50 or 60 dealers in the United States. So you can buy these here in the States. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, looks like we have an 80, 120, and 150, 150 horsepower tractor. But maybe they have more. That's just the name. Kind of makes me think that those are the horsepower. Though 12, 120, 45, 12,000 horsepower, that's quite a bit. <laughs> Uh, then the second thing that we have here is a group of new harvesters from Rotselmash, which is Russian. Uh, we have a small harvester, sort of, and uh, like a, a moderate to larger size harvester. And then we also, for those of you that know what the forage harvesters are, we have a, a, a forage harvester for making silage for your cows. Um, then we also have two headers, obviously a smaller one for the smaller harvester and a larger one for the larger harvester. We also have a one-size-fits-all uh, corn header, and we have all of the attachments for the forage harvester. So these three attachments, corn, uh, wheat, barley, canola, grass, and then um, hay and straw, all three of these can be used with your um, RSM-1403 uh, to get you forage for your cows and also for the biogas facilities on your maps. Last but not least, well, there's two more things. This one I'm kind of excited about. We have a 6x6 six six, uh, Tatra, which Tatra, of course, is a Russian manufacturer also. Uh, now, I think Rotlamesh has been in, in a Rotlamesh, Ross, I'll never say it right, Rotlamesh uh, has been in business since, I think, like 1920, they said. Tatra has been around for a long time. They've been making trucks. They do the, uh, the Dakar rally. A lot of times you see Tatra trucks there racing across the desert. They're well-built. They're made for off-roading and all kinds of abusive terrain, that kind of thing. So here we have an agro truck. It's got the big agro wheels instead of like the crappy man wheels. <laughs> it has some off-roadish tires designed to do farming, most likely, and other heavy-duty operations. We have a farm tech trailer that looks like it's halfway between the Agroliner and the Brantner as far as size, which is cool. It's kind of like an in-between step for a smaller farm. Uh, we also have a bunch of Givernlund, which is... Uh, I think it's Norwegian, but it might be from Denmark. <laughs> Somebody's going to chime in here and tell me where it's from. Uh, Givernland is uh, a pretty well-known, I guess, manufacturer in Europe. I've never heard of it before, but I'm sure they have a dealership here in the United States also. Included with their equipment is a plow. With their equipment <laughs> is a plow, uh, a cultivator. We have a small seeder and a medium-sized seeder, and then we also have a uh, solid fertilizer uh spreader so this is kind of like the amazon the cheapest one this pops on the back of your tractor you put a weight on the front and then you go and spread fertilizer so 
Uh, yeah, really cool stuff. I mean, this is a lot of equipment, a lot of new stuff, a lot of new faces for 20 bucks. And a whole new farm. Now, I'm probably going to be basing my uh, next server on this. So when you guys are ready, you'll have to have this uh, mod to be part of uh, my server. So get ready to spend 19 bucks to get on there. Sorry, guys, but I really want to try this one out. And we'll make this the next season. Uh, that is, at hopefully at that point, I will have figured out how to do TeamSpeak. And also how to do the... Um, and I'm not going live until I do. So uh, we'll do a review on this, and, and maybe I'll start the farm. But uh, we're pretty quickly, I'm going to move it into the uh, live phase. So you guys can join up and be part of the server. And we'll actually have TeamSpeak going, and we'll also hopefully have live streaming. Now, I did find out that I can live stream through YouTube. So uh, you're welcome to watch us on YouTube, and um, we'll actually live stream. And I'm going to probably pick... Seems like Wednesday nights always work best for me. So I know... A lot of my Baptist and evangelical friends out there <laughs> uh, have church on Wednesday nights, but I usually don't start till later in the evening, like around 9 or 10 o'clock, so you can come home and do it after church. And it's up for discussion. I'm totally not, like, fixated on Wednesday yet. I just Wednesday's a good night for me because that's the middle of the week. Wednesday is usually my slowest day business-wise, except for yesterday was crazy. But... Um, in general, I have quiet days on Wednesday. So, all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little snippet. And uh, now back to your regularly scheduled program. Oops. I started recording without my microphone being on. I'm getting absolutely lambasted by my World of Tanks viewers. I think the problem is this, and it's a perception thing. Well, first of all, my farm videos actually get way more views now than my World of Tanks view videos. I don't... It's an odd thing that it shifted that way, but I think less people are interested in, and I think there's just as many people interested on my channel anyway. My people are pretty, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Faithful. And so, but the perception is this. Okay, so I normally I put out two World of Tanks videos a week. And this week I has been no exception. <laughs> Uh, but I released a bunch of farm sim videos because I just was I've been making this series. So, you know, if I'm not making a series of farm sim videos, I'm not putting out as many videos. But I've been making a series, so I've got a bunch of videos to release. Honestly, it took me two nights to make them. I've been sitting on them. Any smart YouTuber knows they have to upload content every day. So I'll sit down in one night and make like ten videos for farming sim because it happens. I sit down for two hours and play. And I record it, and voila! Now, World of Tanks, once again, everyone that's listening, <laughs> it takes me two hours to make one hour of World of Tanks videos. It takes me two hours to make two hours of Farming Sim video, and that gets divided up. So, you get one World of Tanks video to every four Farming Sim videos, but the content amount of time that it takes to create is the same. People forget this. Lando, I know you're mad at me. I know Arctic Trooper has been coming in here making comments. Please just be patient. There will be more World of Tanks videos. I'm going to be doing Replay Fever tomorrow night. And I will not give up on World of Tanks. World of Tanks will never end. I am going at the same pace that I've always gone with World of Tanks. But just because you're seeing more farm videos doesn't mean that I'm doing less World of Tanks. I'm still doing just as much World of Tanks. All right. On to farming. Uh, we have done... We've logged, logged, and logged. Thank you to all of those that uh, put in my comments the uh, trick where you um, take the logs and load them onto the train because that has made me way more money per load. Uh, so here's where we're at. I've taken... I'm done logging for now. Kind of burned out on it. So I moved the New Holland um, 595 that we purchased earlier, the 95 horsepower Series 5 tractor, up to the farm. Uh, I left the arms in the barn here somewhere. But this tractor is going to be my fertilizer tractor and any other kind of small running tasks. Eventually I'll buy it. There's a um, trailer that you can buy so you can refill the cedar and the fertilizer on the field. I'm going to get one of those. Uh, so this guy is up here, loving this tractor. Great mod. Um, we've also got the JCB ready for our planting tomorrow morning. And I have these new Holland arms that's... For that guy. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 
Now, I've taken our JCB telehandler and I bought the bale collector and also brought the big shovel down here to our cow farm. There are no cows yet, but tomorrow there will be. Um, so we have a trailer full of, what is this? Hay? Straw? And that straw is going to be used to, to put bedding down for the cows. And we're also going to, um, our silage, I would imagine, is, it's cooking right now. <laughs> it's fermenting. Uh, it will be available to feed those cows tomorrow, though I might hold off a little bit and actually save some of the money. And uh, we're going to make hay, and we're also going to make uh, hay bales and straw bales so that when this comes due, we'll be able to make total mixed rations because so, I'm going to grow another wheat crop. So maybe we'll wait a day on the cows uh, and not buy them tomorrow, but we'll get hay made and we'll also get... Uh, so this guy uh, was a big help for our farm, but I don't need it really anymore. And I'm pretty much done with the logging. I've got the New Holland with the um, log grapple, and we also still have the trailer parked down there. So if I absolutely have to do lumber, I can always do it manually like I did at the start. Um, it'll never be on the scale that we did here, but we've also wiped out the forest. <laughs> There's some forest left, but, uh, we've used up quite a bit of forest, and, uh, so I'm ready to turn this thing in and get the money for it. We need to get a mixing wagon for the cows, and we also, um, need to buy the cows, so we need to have some funds there, uh, for that. So this is going to fund, I think it's probably worth about $70,000, I'm going to guesstimate. Uh, and we've definitely made, you know, five, six hundred thousand dollars with this thing, so it's it's been worthwhile. We got a lot of really nice, maybe even more than that, because we bought, you know, the crone. We bought all of the equipment for uh, harvesting. We bought the JCB. I bought two New Holland tractors. Uh, we're going to talk about that tractor in a minute here, but uh, this has been a big help. So I'm going to go sell this, and I will be back. I hate selling big pieces of equipment like this. I, I always have that fear that I'm going to regret it. Like, man, I wish I would have kept that because I, now I need money for lumber, you know. But uh, whatever. You got to take risks, right? And like I said, I'm, I think I'm pretty much done with this thing. So let's sell the Wolverine. Yeah, 70000 was my guess. It was worth seventy four. And let's pick up a mixing wagon here for 40000 Man, they're expensive. Jeez. That'll leave us with $100,000 for cattle in the morning. So now we have everything that we need to make the total mixed ration. Let's talk about what we have purchased. All right, so uh, I'm going with the round bales because the round baling equipment is a lot less expensive. It's slower, but we're not going to be able to afford that many cows to begin with. So I don't have to be lightning fast. The downside with this guy as opposed to the square baler, if you haven't watched my baling video... Uh, is that the, the you have to stop every time this thing fills up and then empty a bale out. <laughs> With the square baler, you just keep running, and it just poops them out the back. But this guy, you have to actually stop and unload it. Um, the round bales tend to roll. That's a little a bit of a pain. But at $58,000, this is much more affordable than the $100,000 square baler. In fact, we can take a look in there at the baling technology. Yeah, $128,000. Then, you know, once again, looking at the pricing... The collection wagon for the square bales is 45000 It's only 24000 for the round bales. Yes, you could theoretically buy this flat one and do it manually. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> it is no pleasure cruise trying to uh, collect and do it by hand. So it just, it's a nightmare. The bales fall off. There's all kinds of weird gravity problems. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> you can do it, but it's not fun. Uh, so anyway, we bought a collection wagon. So what we do is we, we have a process here to make hay. Uh, my mower, and I'm going to have to get that. My mower is up at the main farm. So I'm going to have to go up and pick up the mower. You're going to mow it. Then you come through and you run the tether. And the tether dries the grass out. Then you come back and you windrow it. Then you bale it. And then you pick it up with the collection wagon. And that is how you get your hay to feed the cows. 
you also need to have straw. So when I do my next harvest, if you guys remember watching the other videos where I used the silage harvester to collect the, the straw, instead of doing that, we're going to run the baler. And the baler will collect straw and make straw bales. And we will take those straw bales and, um, once again, collect them, put them down by the cows, and store up the next harvest worth of bales. So we'll have a, a bunch of hay and a bunch of straw, and we'll also have silage. We take one of each using the telehandler, and we dump them into here. And um, once we've done that, we, we use the tractor to go feed the cows. I've purchased this little fella um, as a, well, it's actually a pretty big fella. This is not the T6160 that we have in the game. This is the AC model. It's actually 165 turbocharged horsepower. <laughs> turbocharged horsepower. So this tractor uses a turbocharger on a four-cylinder engine to get its horsepower rather than the full-size six-cylinder. Uh, it's a little bit of a detriment, and you'll notice that the motor housing is pretty small on this tractor because it is a four-cylinder. The actual T6160 has a larger the, the full six-cylinder model has a larger engine housing. But uh, the rest, of, other than that, the tractor is the same. Uh, and it does generate 165 horsepower. It will not be as powerful as the actual T6160. But it's got plenty of power to pull and work all of this equipment. It'll also be able to run the mower and the collection wagon for when I'm collecting grass to feed the sheep. Uh, so I just got this as a good kind of all-around me medium-sized tractor. It's efficient but it still has some power. So let's go ahead and start dragging this stuff back. The um, first thing we'll do is grab the tether and the wind rower. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to make trip after trip because, well, <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is nice. This is one of those custom tractors that I downloaded. It's part of that same mod pack. And uh, if you're wondering what that mod pack is, once again, I will put a link in the description. If I forget, please put a comment and say, hey, Arthur, where's that link? You promised, and I'll say, oh crap, you're right, I did. Uh, so this uses the same cockpit as the T6160, the big one. Once again, it just has that smaller motor compartment. I've also, to distinguish it a little bit, I've taken off the fenders. Uh, but you can have fenders on this one. I just ordered mine without them. Uh, I also did not get the front loader attachment, though you can always add that on. <laughs> But I wanted to make this one a little bit different because I already have a front loader and I also have a telehandler, so there's no reason to get another front loader attachment. In real life, it would cost you extra money to have those features. Uh, you'll notice that this tractor does have a 10 kilometer an hour advantage over the T595, so it is faster than our 95 horsepower T5 model and larger. I mean, the, ca the cabin's larger, the overall tractor weight is heavier. And it's got more horsepower. But it is interesting that it's turbocharged and it's a four-cylinder. I think it's a really cool thing that that, uh, that is one of your options. Um, the reason why I say it won't perform as well as the actual 160 naturally aspirated horsepower T6160, uh, the standard model, not the AC model, uh, is because I watched this video where guys actually were comparing the four-cylinder versus the six-cylinder with the same horsepower and the guys were both like yeah it just it's cool but it does not have the pull power it saves you a little bit of money it's definitely more fuel efficient but it does not have the pull power that the uh that the bigger new holland tractor has so or the bigger engine has uh, all right so we're going to actually uh i want to put this this equipment down here in this other barn because well these barns are going to fill up pretty fast with all that equipment, and I want the track to go to go with another one. But, uh, but I felt this was a good kind of balancing tractor. It's not too powerful, not too large. It's still pretty small, but it'll operate the smaller cow feeding equipment. Dang it, I hate those turning wheels on this trailer. Watch those back wheels on that on the wind rower. They turn when you turn. And it makes it really difficult to make the to get it to straighten out when you're trying to go straight. Look at that. Look, they're going the opposite way. My wheels are straight, but they turn the other way. <laughs> what a pain in the butt. So we're gonna pop this back here. So we gonna we're gonna we gonna we're gonna have our work cut out for us in the morning. We're going to have to um, get the. Uh, 
the field seeded. And then we're going to have to take... Oh, we're going to have to get the grass mowed and start mowing some lawns and getting ready to do hay. There's a lot of good spots to mow. There's a huge grass field I found. We'll pass it on the way back and I'll show you. All right, so let's head out. One of the light things I like about this mod is that it's got the the uh, seat bob so you can bounce kind of bounce up and down as you're driving the only downside is when you're on the road it develops a pattern where you continue to bounce over and over again at the same place it's going 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 <laughs> it reminds me one time i went to michigan and they have those you know cement washboard roads and i was in a buick uh oh okay wait a minute this field i was talking about this is huge and then there's that paddock field behind us there sorry mr car um where uh, we can also mow that's part of our quote-unquote property and all this stuff here we can mow so we'll be mowing all of this and, and hit making hay uh, anyway so I was driving this Buick Century I had rented it was my, my rental car for the actually I had it for quite a while maybe like two or three months I had it rented for work as I was going up all over the country doing work and I went up to Detroit for one of the trips and I remember going along these washboard roads, and as I was going, I was like, boink, 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 like the car was just like bouncing continually, and it was like rocking me to sleep, because it was like, ring, 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 and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to pass out. <laughs> so anyway, this tractor cost $140,000, which isn't bad. The T616, in fact, let's take a look real quick at the pricing so you can see it. Um, once again, you go into mods. And I went into my tractors. This is the T6 160 AC. All right, 139,000. And the T6 165 is 140. That's still cheaper, but this is an actual six cylinder. Uh, though, you know, why didn't I? Interesting. I don't know why I didn't buy that one. <laughs> Thought I was saving some money. I saved myself. $2,000 <laughs> could have gotten a much bigger tractor. Duh. Oh, well, what are you going to do? I guess I wanted to try this one too, because it's a little different, but still that, oh, that was silly. I guess really they consider them the same performance wise if they're that close in price. If we look at the non-modified T6160, um, there's that guy and he's got, uh, yeah, exactly 160. But he's $160,000. Now, if I think from what I've noticed in this game, or 160 euros, they're, they're actually, these tractors are way overpriced from their real life equivalents, like by almost double in some cases. So like that, uh, the T475, um, the T, the, uh, or the 475, the little, the little guy that comes stock in this game, uh, even with this mod, they've listed it at fifty thousand dollars or fifty-five, and in the game it's sixty-four. So the six, it's a sixty-four thousand dollar tractor. But that's not the case in real life. The T6 or the T4, the T4 seventy-five is um, is only forty-four thousand dollars new loaded. I think with the arms, so. They're just asking way too much in this game. <laughs> They're asking almost $20,000 euros more, which is going to end up being like, let's see, I think the euro, no, I'm even thinking the pound, but I think the euro is worth like a dollar fifty. So, you know, you're talking like $100,000 for a tractor that costs $44,000. That's, you know, maybe when the game came out, that was where the prices were, but they've come down a lot. So I guess this isn't as bad. I th this is a lot closer than I thought it was. So put the baler in here. Oops. One of the things I like about the T6 series is that they have an incredible turn radius. Even the in-game one does. But uh, they're nice as far as their turn radius goes. It's funny. This is a the tractor does look smaller on the front. That's funny. <laughs> I'm used to the T6 160 because that's usually one of the tractors that I. It's a good workhorse tractor for your farm. And uh, if you don't have any mods, this is funny to see this one. It just does look, it does have a, it's, it's little. Oops, let's just do that right there. That's good. So anyway, I'm going to continue to ferry this stuff. Uh, I think then I'm out of talking points at this point. If I think of something, we'll pop back in. But uh, 
Once again, if you've watched this far, I'm assuming you're not a World of Tanks fan. Uh, I apologize to all of you that are, if, you, if you're still watching. Uh, I'm imagining that you guys that are still here are the ones that like the farming sim too. And honestly, where's World of Tanks going? I feel like I can't rely on that one forever because that game is going to go away eventually. And it's already starting to... I, I don't feel like it's in its demise yet, but I... I don't know how much longer they can carry it. They're, they keep doing weird changes to it that are screwing the game up and, like, reducing the amount of maps that beginners see and stuff like that. It's just, it's, it's, it's like they're trying to kill it. I don't know. Uh, World of Warships is doing really well. I, but I just, I have to think about my channel and where I'm going to go and what's going to happen in the future. And I feel like the Farm Sim is a game that's going to be around forever. It's got a lot of stuff coming out for it. And, you know, in a year we're going to have a new version and it'll just keep getting bigger and better, hopefully. So I feel like uh, I need to... And plus, I like this game better. I do play it more than I do the World of Tanks. So um, not that that's, you know, saying anything bad about World of Tanks, but, you know, I just sometimes I just get frustrated. Like tonight, I was playing with Mr. Mean and Black Chicken. We were just out goofing around, and the teams that we got on were so bad. It was just, it was... It's very frustrating when you guys are, when you're like, when... You're in, you know, I was in my stock T-54, stock, and it's horrible at Tier 9 with a Tier 8 gun. Um, and we were just getting, you know, clobbered. And I st we were still, you know, all three of us, Mr. Mean, Black Chicken, we were still all in the top score. So it's just frustrating. So anyway, like I said, if you're a Tanks fan, hang in there. I'm not going to give up on Tanks. It's not over. But... I do need a break from time to time. I do, because I'm, I'm tired of playing the game all the time, and I get frustrated with it, so... <laughs> Alright guys, I'll see you in a minute. Well, there's always one thing I forget. Uh, we definitely need to get the front, the back mowers. So, <laughs> yeah, there's that. Costs a lot of money. Bummer. What are you going to do? You gotta have it. Heavy man. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a little bit.